Today, we're going to mix around the color wheel to maintain warmth, and then mix around the color wheel to make things cooler. Let's get started. Today, I want to talk about the color wheel. And the reason for talking about the color wheel is because we're going to mix around the color wheel, and I'm going to demonstrate how to do that. We're going to mix around the color wheel so that we can make colors both warmer and cooler. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And I think the best way to do it is to actually demonstrate it. So um, I'm going to cue that footage up now and try to put, uh, put this color wheel in as a cutaway. Let's see if that works. All right, it seems to have worked. So the color wheel is up on the right-hand side. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take cerulean blue and put that on a piece of paper. Cerulean blue with a little bit of water added to it. That is my lightest blue. All right, that's my lightest blue. And so what I want to do now is I want to make that blue a little bit uh, warmer. In order to make it warmer, I have to think about the color wheel. So look at the color wheel for a second and look at blue. If I go down to the, uh, if I move from cerulean blue to the right, I end up in violets. That's going to make things cooler. If I go to the left, I'm going to go toward green, and that likewise is going to keep things cool. So I don't want to do that. Remember I said I want to make it warmer. So in order to make it warmer, I have to look at my warmer colors. My warmer colors are the fire side of the color wheel. They're the reds and the oranges and the yellows. So all I want to do is lighten the cerulean blue a little bit. And in order to do that, I add a little bit of Naples blue to it. I mean, Naples yellow to it. And that's the next mark that I made. You can see it's about the same value. We're not talking about darkness or lightness here. What we're talking about is warmth. It got warmer. Admittedly, it also tipped a little bit toward green, but it's a very blue green. So I'm still within the blue range. Now what I want to do is mix around the color wheel to make a cooler blue. In order to do that, I took cerulean blue, and now I'm adding a little bit of ultramarine blue to it. So what I did was I went from cerulean blue and went to my right and added some right on the color wheel. In other words, if I was driving around it and added some um, ultramarine blue to it, and that makes it cooler. So now I have cerulean blue, and then I warmed it up with some Naples yellow and cooled it down with some ultramarine blue. They're all about the same value. So all we're talking about here is how warm or cool something is. And sometimes when you have an object that is all one color or all one value, sometimes you have to uh, be able to make shape by manipulating how warm or cool something is rather than how light or dark something is. So that is one reason why warm and cool are really important. Warm and cool also obviously affect the way you look at a painting. Warm colors will make you feel sort of warm and happy and cooler colors will make you feel more somber. All right, so here's a Hansa yellow going in, and I want to make it warmer. All right, my choices for warmer are either, um, why am I going into orange? Well, orange would be one of the choices, which, why did I pick orange? That was a mistake. I shouldn't have picked orange. I should have done uh, Hansa yellow and um, just added some uh, Naples yellow to it, something that was lighter. So that, that's very much a mistake on that part. I, I, I didn't. I drove in the wrong direction. Well, maybe that's a good example of driving in the wrong direction. I'm trying to correct it now by adding Naples yellow to it. So Hansa yellow with some Naples yellow to it there. That definitely is a light, um, a warmer uh, yellow than my original yellow. But it unfortunately has some orange in there. That was a mistake. All right, the next thing I'm doing is now I want to cool it down. So I'm using Hansa Yellow. I'm looking at my color wheel, and in order to cool it down, I'm going to drive around to add, and add some um, alizarin crimson or some red to it. I want to stay somewhat yellow if I can, so I'm just using the tip of my brush to add a little bit of um, alizarin crimson to that Hansa Yellow. Tiny bit, tiny, tiny bit. I don't need much. And now I'm going to add more yellow to it. Now I've gotten back, oh, and I see that I needed to tip it just a tiny bit more with some um, ultramarine blue. So that's an example of really dialing into color by using, I used four colors to make that one stripe. But I needed something cooler. And in order to do that, I did see how they're all about the same value, but they are different in temperature. So that last one that I did was Hansa yellow, a little bit of orange into it, and then a little bit of alizarin crimson, 
and a tiny bit of ultramarine blue. It took four colors, four different colors, to get that to be cooler and yet still remain yellow. All right, the next thing I'm doing is al uh, this is um, alizarin crimson, pretty much right from the tube with a little water added to it. You'll notice I am doing this example with primary colors, uh, you know, red, yellow, and blue. In order to make it warmer, I'm adding some Naples yellow to it because that's a warmer yellow. I could have used uh, a lemon yellow if I wanted to. There we go. That's definitely warmer and slightly different in value, I have to say. Now I want to make it cooler. In order to make it cooler, I take alizarin crimson and I dial around the color wheel with, and add some ultramarine blue to it. But I'm careful not to go all the way into violets and leave it in the red range. So what we have here are examples of how to dial around the color wheel. I maintained brightness because I went around the color wheel instead of across. But I did it by um, manipulating color and just tipping it a little bit. I used warm colors to tip my original color so they became warmer, and I used cooler colors to tip my color so they became cooler. The reason that this becomes really important is because sometimes you don't have a great variance in value. Sometimes you can't determine a form because it's lighter or darker necessarily, and so you have to create the illusion of depth by using a color uh, temperature, either warm or cool colors. The other thing the color temperature does is let you control um, how, you know, a feeling in a painting. Those darker, cooler colors are going to feel more somber, and the bright, brighter and lighter and warmer colors are going to feel more friendly and happy. And so you can manipulate emotion that way a little bit too. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. That was a short demonstration on how to mix around the color wheel. So please join my YouTube channel, and I will see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.